All right. Hey there. Welcome to History Chats. Um, yeah. Um, I think we'll just jump right into the much anticipated after putting it off two weeks. We finally got the, the program Gary's been working on. Um, so I'm just going to transition over to him and let him take it away. Thank you, Ben. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, so after a couple of weeks, um, just as a little bit of an introduction to this, this is going to be a little, a little bit of a different tag take on our programs. Uh, we visited unincorporated places in Marathon County, villages, towns. You know, we've been crisscrossing Marathon County for um, for these for many years now with these history chats. With these history chats, so. So as well, as we crisscross Marathon County, let's indeed crisscross at least part. So we're going to talk a little bit this afternoon about County Road N, um, which, for the purposes of this meeting, starts in the little community of Colby, um, in the western side of Marathon County, way way to the west. Um, as you can see on the initial slide, it was originally called, we'll talk about this in a couple of minutes, originally called Wassa Road, and we'll talk a little bit about that history, but eventually uh, uh, the county named it County Highway N, um, and we'll talk a little bit about that history, but it, we, we will also talk about what we see as we go along this road. and. But of course, a lot of what we do is history. So some of the things along this county road are not here, but it does provide a really a, a very glimpse and it covers a lot of different parts of Marathon County history that does reflect in our total history. So um, I hope you enjoy it. A little bit about County Road N. Um, just so that we get a little perspective, uh, we're up on the town of Hull, uh, way up on the um, up on the left side, uh, Colby there, and then a straight line through the towns of Frankfurt, Wien, Castle, Marathon, and then into um, uh, Rib Rib Mountain, and and it goes west and it goes east from there. But uh, for our purposes. We're going to be mostly talking about these towns along uh, Highway, along County Road N. So here, um, so we start with, uh, this is just to fill you in a little bit. Uh, we start there in, in the little village of, of Colby, um, and you see Highway N coming through Cherokee uh, ending up um, south of Marathon City. So, but, but a little bit of history here. You know, it wasn't always, it wasn't always County Road N. Uh, back in the day, um, in the earlier part of the 1900s, when, there, when the road system was starting to be established, um, it was, six, it was uh, 16, starting out in Colby again, coming up through uh, those towns. And then once it hits what we now know as 107, it comes up to, uh, comes up through Marathon City and then turns right and then it heads into Wassa, most likely that same Highway 29, we're not quite sure. But um, it was a state trunk highway. So it's, it was, at that point in time, along with all the other state trunks in 1918, uh, 16 was what we now know as Highway uh, N. The wide red lines, you know, that's that's where we are today. And it continued that way um, up through, uh, on a variety of state trunk maps up through 1925. You can see um, the 16 still up, still a state trunk highway. But then into the 40s and, and into the 50s, it became what we now know, uh, what we now know 
uh, today, Highway 29 uh, flowing uh, west from Wausau into Abbotsford and Highway N coming east from Colby uh, through into Ramountain into Wassa. That was, um, let me just, so this was 1936 for sure when that, when that whole uh, state trunk highway system changed. Um, but, well, but Marathon County also uh, developed its own trunk line and the number one trunk line in Marathon County was known as the Colby Wassa Burnerwood Road, uh, beginning in Colby, uh, coming uh, into Wassa, uh, what we now know as N, and then going um, east on N through Wassa out into Burnerwood. So that was uh, number one, our number one trunk line in Marathon County. Um, so for a little bit of history, again, backing up a little bit, or going back to Colby, the Wassa Road. Um, and what we now, and this is what we are going to be spending a little bit of time with this morning, a county, what the Wassa Road um, and County Road N, picking up on the southern, ex, uh, southern parts of Colby, running straight line, straight line through Cherokee point, and points east. So let's stop at Cherokee. So this is the little crossroads uh, a little east of Colby on N. Um, you see High County Road F coming uh, south um, to, to N and then coming through. So Colby, um, so here we are, Colby. We see the county park. We'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. But Cherokee itself uh, started in 1860. Uh, with a sawmill, the second mill, 1872. Sorry about the spelling. Of the, after the fire destroyed the first mill, um, and then also, but a, it grew um, a store, a grist mill, um, and the one of the early founders of Cherokee uh, came from Cherokee, Iowa. That's how it came to to be called Cherokee. So. One of the things in Cherokee was the dance hall. So, so one of the great stories of Marathon County into the 20s, 30s, and 40s were the dance halls scattered throughout uh, Marathon County. And there was one here in, in Cherokee, uh, 1949, and we had Howard Sturtz, a uh, famous... Um, Polka person from uh, Wisconsin playing here at the at the big dance in Cherokee, and notice the last two dances before Lent. So again, uh, one of the the attractions here in Cherokee was indeed its dance hall. But across the street or across N, you come across Cherokee Park, part of the Marathon County Park System, um, dedicated 1929. Uh, a great, a great event, really, for this part of Marathon County. Um, attendance at Celebration Sunday an estimated over 5,000 people. Um, they really took great pride in Cherokee Park. Uh, it was a great, a great presence in the western part of Marathon County, and people were really willing to take advantage of it. Uh, and people that did take advantage of it, the Methodist Church, for instance and a variety of other groups held, held their picnic, picnics here. Um, the Methodist Church may have been from Colby. I mean, they used Cherokee Park, the Colby area, the Unity, um, the, in addition to the, all the people in the town of Hall, of course, uh, came to be using Cherokee Park as their um, picnic area, their, uh, their recreation area. But it was also just another point, Marathon County event scheduled at Cherokee Park. Soil Conservation Group plans its big picnic here, Cherokee Park, four miles east of Colby. Um, so again, again, becoming even a county, even a county and a statewide park for, for events. And this is the new shelter, 1953. Um, 
again, and, uh, the Marathon County Park System taking good care of it. Um, uh, the county in 1929. Uh, so again, uh, most of, and the, the the caption most of the uh, 53 acres was donated to the county in 1929 by Henry Rhine. A neighboring um, starkeeper and his family. So again, a very important part of this part of Marathon County on Highway N. And in, 19, in 2014, again, a uh, park, a part of the week, uh, a park of the week, Cherokee Park, describing uh, the describing what's all happening and the events and the. Um, the things that people are being doing here at Cherokee Park, the horseshoe pits, uh, the kitchen, the enclosed shelter. Uh, so again, the Marathon County Park System really developing this into one of the highlights of the Marathon County Park System. So then, um, so after going east on N, uh, we come to the town of Frankfurt. Uh, and in the town of Frankfurt, um, well, again, how did uh, Edward Pratz came from Frankfurt, Germany? He was the first chairman of the town of Frankfurt. Just a little bit of an idea of how some of these towns uh, got their name. But with the town of Frankfurt, at least the, the um, important part for me um, on Highway N in this area was the Frankfurt Cheese Factory. Um, uh, uh, in my view, the finest cheddar cheese in the state of Wisconsin at that time. Of course, the Frankfurt Cheese House is no longer here, but it was like the picture says, the local economy booster. It was quite a, a cheese factory, one of the main cheese factories in Marathon County uh, here on, on Highway N. Uh, in the town of Frankfurt. Um, it, you won't see it today. It's gone. The building is gone, no longer producing great cheese. Uh, but it was here um, on Highway N in the town of Frankfurt. And it did get quite a bit of publicity. This is an article in the Herald in 1986, and I won't recount um, recount the story itself, but you can certainly find it back in the in the archives of the Daily Herald back in 1986. It just talks a little bit in, in great depth, in fact, about the the history of this cheese house and the great and the great influence that this family had in building up that cheese house on Highway N. So a great, again, a, a major story, uh, not only in the town of Frankfurt, but also with regard to the that highway that came through um, the town of Frankfurt County Highway N. Then let's move a little bit to the east again to the town of Wien. Uh, that name came from one of the early settlers who uh, in this area who came from uh, Vienna. Uh, that's the the um, they came from Vienna, Austria, and they gave their name to this uh, town here in Marathon County. And one of the land one of the landmarks today um, is St. John's Lutheran Church, and it um, on County Road N, organized in 1875, uh, first church in 1885. Uh, the current church, this built in 1926. Um, again, with with regard to the development of St. John's, and, and again, in the early days, immigrants coming into Marathon County were very eager to build the churches, most likely as a Lutheran church coming from Germany. Uh, these German Lutherans um, came into this part of Marathon County settled early and one of very determined that what they would be doing was to be building their church. Um, a, a common common story throughout Marathon County and here on in you can see that the evidence of that is St. John's Lutheran Church 
um, on the county road N. And that's where that that's where the church is today on County Road N. Also, uh, a, a, ba a little bit further on down is um, one of the country schools. Again, another, st you know, what um, I sort of picking stories here that reflect really not only the, the town history or this, the Highway N story, but the story of Marathon County. So whenever we talk about the early history of Marathon County, we have to talk about the one-room school. And the Strum School um, on Highway N uh, served, uh, like I say, served until 1964 when it was consolidated into the Edgar uh, School District. Um, it was sold eventually to the town of Wien for a town hall. A town of Wien built a new town hall um, and then the building was moved to the steam show grounds and restored. So again, evidence of a story that is common throughout Marathon County, but, but that story is also a big part of Highway N. This is uh, a, 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 um, a little bit of a story about their um, school improvements um, on the Strum School. Uh, they, as, uh, of course, as more children came into the schools, they had to keep adding on, and this is an addition in 1953. Again, what was going, so I see this, and I think, what was going on? Well, the Strum School District 5 of the town of Wien um, is presenting its Christmas program Thursday, December the 20th, and then here, so again, in addition to a lot of other events and a lot of other places going on within within a community, we have the Strum School here uh, presenting their community community program uh, for their students and for the parents and for the community. Really, uh, a little bit of a Christmas program, so uh, something that has always happened uh, and um, continues to happen. But it was an essential part of these one-room schoolhouses as they uh, live through that history of Marathon County. Again, today, um, it was, re like the story says, it was remodeled and there, and there was a Strum School students came back to have a reunion and to uh, celebrate the, the remodeled uh, Strum School. So then, uh, moving east from the town of Ca uh, town of Wien into the town of Castle, and this is um, where I'll end the story for now. Of course, Highway N continues on to um, Rim Mountain and then points east. And this, so just so that you know, the story of Highway N does not end today, but I'm sure we'll find more stories with regard to Highway N. But today. We're talking a little bit about the town of Castle on the, on the, um, basically on the corner of 107, as it comes down from Marathon City, and we feature um, FX Schilling. Again, every history story has to talk about the people. Well, FX Schilling story, um, his his parents came were part of the Pittsburgh Germans that came into this part of Marathon County, mostly Marathon City, town of Marathon, town of Castle. Uh, his, um, so he was born 1868, um, became a very influential person within the town of Castle, um, uh, chairman of the town of Castle for 31 years, served as town treasurer, uh, town clerk, president of the Marathon County, Mar I'm sorry, Marathon City Telephone Company, secretary of the Central Creamery, treasurer uh, treasure of the a German group, member of St. Mary's Catholic Church in Marathon. Um, again, he was served as chairman of the Marathon County Board of Supervisors. Um, he represented the first district in Marathon County in 1913, I'm sorry, in the state legislature from 1913 to 1914, um, affiliated with the Republican Party. 
Uh, so quite an influential, quite an influential person within within Marathon County's history, specifically its its um, its political history. Uh, this is an article in 1913 when he was in the Wisconsin legislature, and then it, uh, speaking to the point that uh, Mr. Schilling was um, in the legislature promoting the idea of moving the state fair uh, from Milwaukee to Wausau. Um, Mr. Schilling was quite adamant in presenting this idea. It didn't get very far as we know today, but he was one of the strong promoters in this time when he was in the legislature of moving the state fair uh, into Wausau and Marathon County. Um, again, another article about what he was about, especially inter uh, as the article says, Mr. Schilling's especially interested in securing good road legislation and came up principally on that account up into Wasa. So again, a little bit of a, a sense of what Mr. Schilling was up to when he was in the Wisconsin legislature, uh, 1913 to 1914. Um, but as uh, as uh, a German in 19 during World War One, um, it was an article that says ex member of the legislature is indicted. Uh, and the article goes on to say that uh, he was um, charged with violating the Espionage Act um, at that time. And what basically he was, um, in that role, he counseled young men to evade wartime draft and was arrested, convicted, and sentenced to a, a huge fine and sent to Fort Leavenworth. Um, so again, he gets 18 months. Mr. Schilling was um, sent to Fort, Fort Leavenworth. Again, a story of Mr. Schilling, not only his great influence within the politics of Marathon County and a great, and a great role that he had, uh, obviously a variety of different positions, but again, the great turmoil that, that German Americans were feeling during World War I, uh, evidenced by Mr. Schilling uh, who went to Fort Leavenworth for counseling um, young people with regard to the draft. So again, I, I uh, hold up Mr. Schilling as, uh, and he lived on basically on the corner of 107 uh, on N. So he was uh, also a native of Highway N as part of that, part of that story with regard to Highway N uh, and its great influence on the history of Marathon County. Um, but in 19, uh, sort of what was going on also in 1918, Chairman F.X. Schilling, he was elected to chairman of the town of Castle, and then later on, F.X. Schilling was elected to be constable. So even while he was going through this with regard to his indictment um, for counseling um, to evade the draft, uh, he was still being elected to offices here in Marathon County. Um, eventually, uh, he, in the late, uh, late 1940s, he was living in Rockchilds, and he was killed in an accident uh, in, Rock, in Rockchilds. Um, but again, this article does note the, the great influence that he did have uh, on the history of Marathon County. So with that, I, we sort of come to a certain end of uh, a little bit of history of County Road N, sort of ending at 107 there. Um, there's more history to the east coming in through uh, the town of Marathon, Red Mountain heading east, crossing the river heading east. Um, so that will, that story will come, but this is a little bit of what I could um, record for you uh, with regard to this little section of Highway N and its great influence, the little incidents of, of churches, schools, parks, all playing a part of the larger history of Marathon County and all those were fitting in on Highway N. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, uh, take that ride sometimes. Some things are uh, some buildings are not there anymore, 
but um, some things are there, and it's quite a, an achievement to to see some of the history right in front of our eyes as we go down some of our county roads here in Marathon County. So with that, I'll turn it back to Ben. Yeah, awesome. <clears throat> so yeah, as Gary said, maybe maybe at some point we'll return and continue the trip down, or maybe we'll we'll take a turn and go up a different road. Um, you know, interesting little experiment of you know with the format here, and hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, I just uh, I don't have a graphic or anything, but for next week I'm going to be I'm in the process of recording something where I'm going to be having an internal meeting type thing. So uh, we're not going to be available live, but don't worry. There's another behind the exhibits video that I've been doing, <clears throat> and I think it'll be pretty fun. Um, but I do have something to tell show you. Um, we have our <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, our final uh, history speaks of the year um, is going to be uh, on November eighteenth. So. Um, coming up here <clears throat> in a couple weeks, uh, and that's going to be um, Brett Barker, uh, Professor Barker is coming back. Um, always, always a great, great uh, speak, uh, speaking speaker and, and program that he puts on, um, and it's specifically as we uh, look at the Gettysburg Address, which is 160 years ago, and that great speech, um, you know, where does that come from and, and the history surrounding that, and um, I'm sure it'll be a good program. So I want to let you know about that. That's coming up uh, you know, we, we usually have it later in, in the month, but um, the middle of the month here for November, coming up quickly. Um, anyway, thanks for watching, as always. Um, yeah, we appreciate you, and um, hopefully you're enjoying the, the history. And uh, we'll be back with more some, some more history uh, next week. Um, so in the meantime, have a, have a wonderful rest of your, your, your day and your, your, your week.